Greetings, YouTube, and welcome to the Daily Dog Blog. Cool dogs out and about on a freezing cold February morning. Check out the Native American encounters with Sasquatch while we wait on Cool Dog to decide to go in. In the early 2000 period, I had a floating Native gift store in my home for my young child and my common-law wife at the time over in Village Island catering to the tourists. And I was stirring soup on the stove and this two kayakers walked into the float house and the woman goes, what throws rocks out here, bears or squirrels? And I got my attention, so I asked her, what are you talking about? And she was, oh, we're camped over on Turner Island at this peninsula. I said, yeah, I know the place. And she was, we're sitting in a little structure. I said, yeah, there's like a lean-to frame on the beach, on the white shell beach. And she was, we're watching the stars sparkle and reflect on the calm water. And all of a sudden, we could hear little pebbles, rocks being thrown from the trees behind us and splashing. Ba-dunk, ba-dunk. And she goes, we're wondering what it was. And I said, well... Nothing throws rocks out here except for humans and Bafus, the wild man of the woods, the male Sasquatch. And it's one of their traits. It's a primitive, it's a primate characteristic that Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall established back in the 60s with primates, that when threatened or curious, they'll throw rocks. And if they're really threatened, they'll shake foliage or they'll push over dead foliage. And it's documented with chimpanzees, mountain gorillas, orangutans, monkeys, that they do these primate characteristics and acts when they feel threatened and of course if you correlate that to sasquatch bigfoot sightings it's rampant it's across the board so what is bigfoot it's nothing more than north america's undiscovered great ape but it's also found in europe asia even down in the south pacific australia they call it yaoi and so forth but out here we call it Bakus and junoha and when i told that lady about what i thought it was she got scared and i said look ma'am I said, I'm a watchman. I'll go grab your tent with your husband, put it in the boat, and we'll bring you over to our village island. You can camp on the dock. And she said, oh, thank you. I want to do that. But when we came here, of course, I went and looked behind the campsite here, and I found a tree snap. It was about that high where something had grabbed a small spruce tree, busted it, and twisted it. Well, a human can't do that. And it wasn't snow damage. It was fresh. It had been done within a few hours. So that's another primate characteristic, especially of the North American Bigfoot, that they do tree staffs. They also do, like, primitive lean-to shelters and nests. So if you do come across something like that, do I believe in the creature? Of course I do. It's like a white blackberry. You spend enough time out here, you got to see it. I have heard them. I have seen them in the spotlight of my sane boat, not a quarter mile away from here in native anchorage in 1994 it's well documented in dr john bindernagel's book north america's undiscovered grade eight the sasquatch about my encounter with three of my crew men on board and we put a spotlight on and there 100 yards in front of us this big huge human boom dropped on its knee and then the female dropped on its knee and bent like that and for 20 minutes with my spotlight, we watched these two creatures, but I could see reflection of eye, two eyes, one eye, like something was breathing with his arm in front of it. And when we bring the dance of the Bukwus, the wild man of woods, to life in our big ceremonies of potlatch and other events, you'll have a costume dancer with a fur-covered costume, a mask that looks like this ape. And when you dance it, you're down low like that. And that's what the Bokwus is said to be like when you see it. It's always hiding behind its hair-covered arm. And at times, you can hear them out here. What you're listening for is they chirp when they communicate back and forth. And when they holler, they're whoop, 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 when they call back and forth from one to another. And if you don't believe in it, come stay out here in October into November when the clams get good. And I guarantee you, you're going to believe in something that, does, this, that doesn't just snap, crack, pop in the bush at night. They may even come down and shake some foliage for you if they feel threatened. They may take a stick and bang it against a tree. Bang, 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 bang. And as aboriginals, when we're taught hunting skills, as I taught my son and others, when you hear that banging of a tree, you stop, turn around, and go back where you came from. That's the book. What's telling you? My family's here. I don't want you coming further. 
What happens if we go further? Well, just go on the internet and look about missing people who went camping and kayaking. Well, 411, that's what happens to people who find Bigfoot and don't listen to the stick knocking. When you hear that stick knocking, you better run. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for me and the cool dog, and we'll be back with some more next time.